Good evening. Welcome to the Spiritual But Not Religious show. I'm your host, George Lewis. The Spiritual But Not Religious show is brought to you by the Spiritual Broadcasting Network, SBN. Uh, SBN was started to be to bring you the voices of the spiritual community. Uh, right as of this point, we haven't had any real central source. Uh, we got all over the place as far as the spiritual community is concerned, especially if you're spiritual but not religious. Uh, there just isn't any real gathering place for us. Uh, as a matter of fact, spiritual but not religious, uh, we don't go to church. We have a higher power. We believe in a God of some sort um, in various ways, and uh, and we're working at becoming the, the voice for that community. I have two really, I have, not, I, have, I have two good guests next week, two great guests. I've got Becky Clark. Becky Clark lives in uh, in London, or just not, not London, I'm sorry. She lives in, in, in the UK. And Becky is a young woman, uh, I believe she just turned 18. She's going to be an author, going to be a writer, and she suffers from albinism. And the, the uh, amount of uh, prejudice and, uh, and, and difficulties that that causes for her, uh, you know, people making fun of her and so forth. So we're going to have her on for a few minutes to talk with her about albinism, how we might be able to make people aware of uh, the difficulties with albinism. Uh, and uh, after that, we've got a, uh, an excellent guest going to talk with us about whether or not you're possessed. Wayne Brewer uh, wrote a great little book here, and uh, it's very, very interesting. I, I know the, the, the title of it kind of like tends to put you off a little bit, but it's, it's super interesting, and there's a lot more to this than, than what meets the eye. My guest tonight is a, a really super lady uh, who has really tackled a, a, one of the more difficult areas in, in, uh, in our lives. She's a, uh, a, a, a therapist. She's a, uh, she has a PhD, Linda Savage. She has written a book called Reclaiming Goddess Sexuality, The Power of the Feminine Way. And I'll tell you what, in, in reading her book, I have, I have, uh, I use a highlighter and I have, on every page almost, I've highlighted something that's, uh, that's really, really powerful for, uh, for future use and, and for this evening. Uh, I guess, Tom, we, if we got Linda uh, on the line. Yeah, on the phone, we lost her. Out we lost the video? video That's phone. unfortunate. Unfortunately, Linda's had some technical problems, and uh, let me let me bring Linda on. Hi, Linda, have we got you? I'm um, not sure, because uh, I don't see you anymore. No? Oh, you don't see me? Okay, well, what you, the, what you do is, do uh, you know how to refresh your browser? Actually, I'll tell you what, the, the, the truth of the matter, uh, Linda, you would be better off if you don't see me because there's a lag. Okay. And, and, if, you're, and if you're watching, it's going to be a problem. I want to get your volume up a little bit I'm more sure. here. As long as you can see me and that's good, then I don't mind. Well, you know, unfortunately, your modem must have kicked out because your video is not there. All we have is audio, and at this point uh, in, the, uh, in the show, we really can't get you back on, so... I'm really sorry about that. I was looking forward to being able to uh, to, to, to see you face to face myself. Yeah. I, yeah. I've really been looking forward to this, Linda. I I have uh, devoured your book. Uh, you know, I want to want to tell our audience a bit about uh, about the way the book is written. L Linda's a PhD, and and so she has the capacity to write to to intellectuals. And you know, sometimes a book that's written to intellectuals can be very very difficult to read. But she chose what I know is the hard way for authors, and that's to, to, to really bring it down to where it's really readable by everybody out there. And uh, she's done a great job with it. It's a, it's a super read. W what I hope to do tonight with Linda is, is make you aware of how valuable what she's written here is, how it can help you, and how it can make your life better. I can't even begin to tell you how much you, you should go over and purchase this book. And, and we're not trying to sell books tonight, I, I guarantee you. But uh, 
and you can get it on Barnes and Noble, Amazon.com, you know, the standard places. It's Reclaiming Goddess Sexuality. Linda also does uh, uh, work, uh, one-on-one kinds of work, and we'll get her phone number and her uh, web page address up. Tom will put it up in the chat room, and we'll have uh, Linda uh, talk about it. So, Linda, with a, we, I guess we have the introduction out of the way. Uh, be, um, before I begin, I, I am, you know, like so uh, impressed with what you've done here. What I, what I would really like to be able to do, and I need your help with this, and if, and, uh, and that is, I'd like to do a, a follow-up show on, on this, with a male counterpart to what you've written. There is there any such a thing out there, anybody that you know of? It's uh, written by uh, Spiritual Sex, you mean? Well, that's, that that really complements your work, so that we can we can speak to the males on the next show. Is, uh, is well, I have a couple of ideas. Uh, yeah, great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, okay, well, you and I will talk about those about those later. Yeah. So w- let's let's give the audience an idea of who you are, so that uh, and where you come from, so that. So they can really understand uh, the value of your work. One of the things that I observed pretty quickly was the fact that uh, you're talking from your experience. You've actually done the work. You work with people in this in this area on a regular basis, and that's impressive and and uh, really essential for for any kind of recovery from. Uh, in the sexual area, so let's give us a little idea, a brief idea of, uh, of uh, you know where you come from, how you got into this, and and then we'll take kind of take it from there. Okay. Well, I I come from a, a upper middle class Boston family, so uh, highly educated, all that good stuff. Uh huh. Began to get interested in uh, spiritual seeking in the seventies. Right. And that's what I write about in the book. The thing that began my journey into looking into spiritual sexuality was actually a dream that I had at the community of Finthorn on the summer solstice. Okay, well, I was going to ask you to tell that to tell that story anyhow early on. I know you, you're, you're, you're kind of late in the book when you bring your story in, but I think it really sets the stage for tonight's show. Maybe, maybe you can just give us in, in real detail uh, what happened for you with that dream. Yeah, um, I'll try to kind of make it simple. Okay. What, what occurred is that I'd uh, gone into a spiritual community, decided that celibacy was the way to go. That was very popular at that time. Right. And then um, was traveling to Sinthorn, which is still a, a mecca for a lot of spiritual seekers. Absolutely. And on the summer solstice, I had a dream, which is really more like a waking dream. Uh-huh. And um, participated in a ritual, an ancient ritual, uh, which I later researched and found it was called the Great Marriage. Uh-huh. Uh, marriage not referring to forever and after, you know, you're still together. But, to death uh, do us part, right. Of a very high nature. Uh-huh. And it left me profoundly moved to where several days later I was still feeling the energy. And um, I went back to the community, eventually went back to school to get a Ph.D., and didn't know I was going to specialize in this area, but was more or less led into specializing in sex therapy from the very beginning. Right. So once I got licensed as a psychologist and all that good stuff, I worked with couples primarily. I worked with individuals as well. And more and more, I became fascinated by how do we make something work long term? Right. Because... Uh, sex is great, everybody's having a good old time, well not everybody, but many people, but nobody knows how to connect to a partner after the early uh, bells and whistles stage. Absolutely. Yeah, and so I was always interested in how can we help men and women actually have a connection that isn't just about what I call the tingly genital thing. Right. And so I began (coughs) to want to write about a way that works for women because more than anything, I saw that women were getting sort of frustrated and bored, and it just wasn't working for them. I mean, the whole 70s was about positions, and let's teach everybody how to have an orgasm, and it, it really wasn't working. Right. So when I <clears throat> began to research, I was looking into these cultures that pre-exist the structures that we've had in place for roughly around 4,000 years, uh, roughly that. But they're called p- 